I'm not expecting this video to get 10 million views, but the original project did, and I think I've made it better. Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy, and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. And if you've been watching some of my recent videos, you know that I've been working with a lot of aluminum cans to make some projects. So I was actually really surprised when I stumbled onto this video that had a whopping 10 million views. It was really cute and I decided to give it a try. You can check out the original video here. I think I've made some improvements to it though. I've added a couple of fun finishes, made it a little simpler. And be sure to stay tuned till the end where I'll show you how I actually use the project once I'm finished. To make this project, you're going to need two cans, and I'm going to make two of them, so I have four cans here. The first thing you want to do is just take off the pull tabs and set them aside because you're going to need them later. The next step is to remove the top of one of the cans. So I do that with a tool that I bought that's called Draft Top, and I think it was about $20. You can also find different brands cheaper online, but if you don't have uh, one of these tools or you don't want to purchase one, there's a link in the corner right now that you can click on. I haven't actually tried it, but the video shows how to remove the tops with some sandpaper and some needle nose pliers. So you can watch that video and give it a try if you'd rather. But if you want to purchase one of these tools, it's pretty simple to use. You just clamp it on the top. There's some, there's some little wheels here. And you just set them inside the rim hold it tight and turn the can until you kind of hear the cracking noise like this. And that way you know you're kind of getting into the rim. And these cans, some cans don't come off quite as easily, but this just takes the can lid right off. Now, I wanna go ahead and save this piece as well. So I'm gonna set it aside with my pull tabs, and then I'm gonna take because I'm making two, I'm gonna take the top off of this can as well. So the next step is to take the can that I've removed the lid from, and then I just have a couple of blocks of wood here. They, this measures about an inch and an eighth from top to bottom. You can switch it up a little bit if you want to. A two by four would work. Uh, anything you wanna stack up to draw your line. So I'm gonna put my Sharpie right on my block, and then I'm just gonna turn my can to draw a line all the way around. And once that's done, I'm gonna flip it over and draw another line. You can see my two lines here, and this is sort of the dead space in between. So I'm gonna cut my can in half and cut that portion out. And I just use a knife to start my cut and then some scissors to clean it up. For the second can, the only portion I need is this bottom piece, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top off and cut the sides because I like to save the sides for other projects. So this is the part we're gonna be using, but like I said, I like to save this piece, and if you're interested in, in seeing how I flatten the can pieces, there's a link to that in the corner right now. And you can use that for all kinds of other craft projects. So I've used my knife and my scissors to cut the can so far, but for this portion, you're gonna want some tin snips. And I love these pair, they're about $10. You can get them at Home Depot. And if you cut metal at all, they just come in really handy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get this excess off of the edge. Now that that's out of the way, what I want to do is just cut down right in this rim along the curve of this can so that I'm just going to be left with this little domed piece. So here's what you should have when you're done cutting. You'll have the top piece with the lid removed, the bottom rounded piece, your lid, two pull tabs, and the bottom piece. 
The next thing I want to do is take my two top pieces and I'm going to be adding a little bit of Mod Podge. I have the high gloss which is a little bit thicker. I think that regular Mod Podge or even Elmer's glue or something would work. Basically I want to add a little bit of tackiness and make these pieces just fit a little tighter because you can set this lid back on carefully but it does have a tendency to tip or to push all the way through and we want it to fit a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of glue around the edge of the top and a little bit of glue around the rim of the top of the can. The Mod Podge has dried on my two pieces now so I'm going to go to the next step and for this step I'm going to be using my E6000 glue and what I want to do is just attach this piece inside my lid. So I'm just going to put a little bead of glue all the way around the edge of this lid that I removed and then I'm just going to set my domed piece on top. Press it into the glue a little and we're going to set that aside. This glue takes about 24 hours to totally cure but it probably will set up in an hour or so. Next I'm going to take my two pull tabs and the needle nose pliers and I'm just going to bend them at a 45 degree angle. And now I'm going to take the top of my can and one of my pull tabs and I'm just going to add a little bit of E6000 glue to my pull tab here. And I want to glue it right at the top of the curve of the can here. So I'm going to let that set up for about 30 minutes before I glue the other side. So the E6000 has been setting up for about 30 minutes so this isn't glued on here super tight but it will hold. So I'm ready to put the other tab on. So I'm just going to repeat the process and then I want to put it right opposite the other tab. Again right at the point where the can curves. And then because this isn't firmly on there I'm just going to use a towel and I can kind of tuck this tab in there. So that's just a little tip on how to not knock the other tab off while you're when you put the other one on. And then I'm going to take more of my E6000 glue and I'm going to attach a little handle to the top here. I have a little bead that I've made from aluminum cans and also an eyelet screw. So I'm just going to glue those to the top of my lid here. So one way to fit these two pieces together is to slit the bottom and I'm just going to cut it kind of almost all the way down to the rim and then you can kind of pinch the bottom piece and slide it inside the top piece and there are obvious reasons for doing it this way it's a little bit cleaner finish in the back but in some cases you might want to leave the bottom intact and for my main use for this project I do want the bottom piece to be intact. So I'm going to go ahead and slit the back in the middle between my two little notches on the top piece again up to where the curve starts and then I'm going to slide it again on the outside so that the two pieces fit together. And this does leave a little bit of a visible slit, but it's fairly discreet and it's hidden in the back. So you can leave your little tins unfinished or you can decorate them. I added some homemade beads that I made from aluminum cans to the tops of some of mine. I also decorated them with some other little trinkety things I had in my stash. I spray painted some of them copper because I'm very into copper right now and I also did a faux oxidized copper finish on some of them. If you're interested in that tutorial you can check the link in the corner above and don't worry if you're missing some of these links I will put all of them in the description box as well. I don't know about you but I thought these little aluminum tins were super cute. It was fun to play around with different ways to finish them, decorate them, make them a few fun different sizes and you can find lots of different little uses for them. You could store your spare change, keep a few little pieces of jewelry in there, they could make cute tiny little gift boxes, 
But the reason that I made them was to make some citronella candles for my patio, which is why I needed the bottom intact because I made some very simple Crisco candles to burn outside. And if you're interested in more about that, you can click the link above right now. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, I have lots of other aluminum can projects for you to try. So click or tap your screen to learn more. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.